Hello and welcome to 90 East. In this video we'll be looking at instantaneous speed and this is just a fancy term to describe calculating the speed of an object at any one point in time. What do we mean by this? Well, you'll know that a car for example will never go from at rest or being parked in the garage to 50 kilometers an hour or 30 miles an hour straight away. Instead it needs to actually build up to that speed. Although we have acknowledged that objects and people don't travel at a constant speed in our previous videos, the distance time graphs that we've been looking at so far have been of objects traveling at a constant speed. This graph instead illustrates the increasing speed that a person gathers as they go from standing to walking. In an exam or an assignment, you may be asked to calculate the speed at any particular point in a curved distance time graph. So for example, at point A. To do this, you just need to draw a tangent to the curve and then calculate the slope or the gradient of that tangent. So let's do that here. First we need to look at the change in the y-axis, and that's 2.5 meters, making sure that we always put our units into the equations. And then we need to look at the change in the x-axis, and to do that we need to draw a line down and see where it meets the x-axis, 2.55, and look at where the tangent also intersects with the x-axis, and that's 0.75. We'll put those numbers into our equation now, remembering to always keep the brackets there because you need to do the subtraction first before you do the division. So let's do that subtraction now. So 2.55 minus 0 0.75 is equal to 1.8 seconds. So our equation here for average speed will be 2.5 meters divided by 1.8 seconds, which equals to 1.4 meters per second. Let's look at another point now. If you'd like to make the most of this video, why don't you pause here and calculate the instantaneous speed at point B, and then join us to see if you have the same answer. So let's get started. We'll draw a tangent to the curve, and then we need to look at the change in the y-axis, which is 3.75 meters, and then we need to look at the change in the x-axis. So here we've drawn a line. We need to see where it intersects with the x-axis, which is 2.4 and then where the tangent intersects with the x-axis, which is 1.05. Now we need to put those numbers into our equation, and we need to do the subtraction first, so 2.4 minus 1.05, which is 1.35 seconds, and then the average speed we can calculate as being 3.75 divided by 1.35, which is 2.8 meters a second. As always, it's good to do a double check of our numbers and of the gradients here, so we can see that the gradient of the tangent at point B is steeper than that at point A. So we can expect that the instantaneous speed that we calculate for point B will be higher than that for point A. And that's what we found in our calculations. Now just a quick reminder that to be able to calculate speed using the gradients like we have, you need to have distance plotted on the y-axis and time plotted on the x-axis. If it's the opposite way around on a graph that's given to you, you need to look at the inverse of the slope. If you're not sure what we mean by that, please make sure you have a look at the worksheet linked in the description box below. For now, you just need to remember that speed will usually, if not always, vary during a journey. But we can calculate the instantaneous speed by looking at the slope or gradient of a tangent at any one point in time in the journey. As always, there's a worksheet linked in the description box below. Have a look. And if you've got any questions, feel free to directly message us through YouTube or send us an email to 90easttv at gmail.com. Thanks, everyone.